All right, folks. Hello, and welcome back to Creepy, creepy Whispers Scary Time, or uh, as I like to call it, Downstage Gaming. I'm your host, Josh, and this is part six on our path to truth in our Let's Play of The Letter. Uh, when we last left off, poor Ash uh, started a relationship with Isabella and then immediately got stabbed and Isabella watched him die. <laughs> so that's where we're at. Now we're starting with Luke with a much uh, spookier beginning here. And I'm curious if this is going to deal with the fact that he murdered his wife. Let's find out. I just can't get it out of my head, no matter how hard I try. You would be nothing without me. Your company would oh. be buried in debt, and you'd be begging on the streets if it weren't for me! This is probably right before the murder happens. I can still feel their stares, the way they judge me with their tiny, empty minds. Pinpricks on the back of my head, eyes all over me. They don't look at me with awe and desire, but with accusations and disgust. If I don't do something, everything I have, everything I've earned, will all amount to nothing. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> I, that must be intentional, right? Honey, I'm home. I can think of nothing else all throughout the day, and it has left me nervous and agitated. I've done little else but worry about it. Why, I almost shot a thug in the foot for laughing too loud while I was enjoying a sandwich. And I've contemplated, jumping back and forth between yes and no, will and won't, mulling over a word that starts with M, and I've been doing so with great malice. Murder on my mind, it seems a bit too much, I know. It's just a thought, but thoughts are dangerous things. Who cares what the buffoons think of me? They are beneath me. But Hana... To think that she feels that way towards me. I can't stomach the thought that she thinks so lowly of me. That she may have always believed me to be less than her. It was the way she looked at me. With eyes so full of anger and hatred that burns me most of all. There is no prince that loves another better. She is not deserving. Yeah, I had a feeling that, like, while this clearly... I I'm not going to put full blame... Uh, out of Luke's hands that this was probably uh, pushed by the spirit here. Darling, love, buttercup, why aren't you answering? Upstairs, Luke. Your princely dignity must not suffer that wretch. No, I mustn't. I am beneath no one. My steps are slow and heavy as I climb the stairs. One of my knives rests neatly up my sleeve, and its cold blade will not let me forget its presence, nor my intent. And when I enter our room and look upon her where she stays, I have a thought that nearly makes me laugh. I might not be a prince here to save the princess in the tower. I just might be the dragon that takes and kill. Yet she doesn't know that. Not yet. Even I am unsure which way it'll go right now. This lewd woman is not worthy. So lewd. She should not escape without Anna, permission. stop sending me your lewds. Here I am expecting a warm welcome home, and here you are locked up in the room like a shut-in. Oh, Hana, what am I to do with you? Is it gonna be murder? <laughs> Probably. You're looking a little bit pale. Are you alright? I must have had something funny, actually. Maybe from the party last night. Maybe breakfast or lunch. Oh, if only that were the case. Perhaps you would have been too sick to do what you did to me last night. You Hans had been acting really strangely while you were gone. D do you think? Do I think what? That he poisoned you? Don't be silly. He wouldn't do such a thing unless I tell him to. That bastard was told to look after her, make sure she doesn't leave. A guard for the princess. I did not tell him the extent of my plans, only that I hope to talk to her, to see how this has come to be. But I can't even find a reason to try and forgive her for what she's done. If I'm to do anything, it would be best to control the situation so I can steer the story. One cannot get away with crimes as much as I have without being a director of a nature. I can be the loving husband, distraught over his wife's death if needed. Or if she were to, say, disappear? 
That can be arranged as well, whichever I see fit. A great hesitance comes over me, though, as I hold her in my arms, one that I haven't felt before. Even things such as killing comes easy with the idea that it is for my well-being. But then again, this is Hana. Sweet Hana. Am I really to do this? Perhaps we can still fix things. Don't you worry. If you are sick, I'll take care of you myself. I did tell you that you'll have my afternoon and every moment after for as long as you live, didn't I? I am just so worried about my poor wifey. That Rochelle woman had some nerve, and I've insulted your honor so. I mean, really, when somebody uses the word wifey, somebody deserves to die, that much is sure. My poor wifey has been through so much. Silently, I procure my knife and press it against the small of her back. This close, and I can feel the hitch of her breath, and it is all too easy to imagine the quickening of her heart. To know I hold another human's life in my hands can be rather breathtaking at times. It is power, after all. Enticing and intoxicating. My poor, spoiled, wifey, Hanna fucking Evans. Silver spoon in her mouth, never had to lift a finger in her goddamn life. Except that that's not exactly true, and you know that. Poor wifey trying to ruin everything for me. All that I've worked so hard for. She'll just take it all away. Just like that. We've got to fix that. You know, you and I, we have to make sure you don't pull a dodgy stunt like the one you did last night. Even if we have to take you out of the picture permanently. It makes one feel like a god and a monster in equal measure. But one cannot be both. Which one am I? I... I'm... Kill her. Kill her now. Why are you doing this? It is for the best. Because, Hana, darling... It's never enough. I want it all. <laughs> Just like Sharpay from High School Musical. She is only getting in our way. You don't have to do this. You can still have it all, Luke. Just please. Don't you love me? Not really. I do love you so very much. Oh, I still do, Hana. I do love you. I love you. I love you, but truth be told, you would have been hurt sooner or later, one way or another. The least I can do is make it quick and painless and have you in my arms as you go. That's a little messed up, my dude. <laughs> Others go out screaming, suffering, because there's so much pain in this world. This is a gift, right? But you're outliving your usefulness. In fact, you're becoming a pain in the arse, just like your dear old dad. Now I'm doing you a favor, and you'll be with him again. Real soon. There is no prince more caring and loving. Now be rid of her. Which is why I must do this, even though it pains me to. What's so funny? <laughs> There's nothing funny, so why am I laughing as well? We went back. So beautiful. No, you wouldn't now. Don't you lie, Hannah. How does one get away with murder? By being clean and efficient. By being methodical. By being ready to do anything and everything to make sure you aren't caught or implicated of the crime. A knife in the back. They never quite see it coming, do they? And the knife stays in there until the blood stops flowing as freely as it does. A cork stopper for something a lot more gory than wine it means a lot less blood on my person as well. There's no time to delay, no time to think twice while I start to drag the body face down so the blood doesn't spill on the floor. I can take her out into the hall. I can't take her out into the hallway just yet in case an errant servant strays past, but the room next to ours is remote and inaccessible to the rest of the house. Hana has forbidden anyone to go in there. What would be the children's room, as she had wished it to be, is a pet project of hers. Only she and McCulloch have been allowed. 
nobody would even dare set foot in there. Even I have not. That was mostly out of indifference. And Bacalic's dead, so I don't have to worry about her. It'll have to do for now. A thorough cleaning will also have to be scheduled. Some lye will need to be purchased, or actually daffodils. Cover it up with fertilizer and we can plant daffodils on it. Alibis will have to be planned, the possibilities for that are endless and will have to be thought through later. In the meantime, my body moves on autopilot. How many times have I done this? I don't really know. Although it has been a while, I act with a familiarity I shouldn't be disturbed by. My mind screams, it's Hana! But a part of me snuffs it out. It tells me to be quiet and be a good little boy. I've done this before and being sentimental has not done me any favors. What I do now has gotten me far in life, so why should this be any different? It was, Hana. Now, it's simply a cooling body. That's all this is. A body and a crime scene I need to be rid of. Right? In my hurry to hide the body, what I see next blindsides me. Johan? What? What is all this? You know? Walls and off-white. A simple base to be painted on with another color it makes the room stand in contrast to the others, plastered with wallpaper. Oh, is this gonna be like, she really prepared it well? The area is sparsely furnished with little more than a little toy chest tucked in the corner of the room, along with a shelf, barren except a few books and trinkets. Two teddy bears stare down at me from their shelves, but it is what stands by the window that catches me off guard. There is a moment of confusion, as if my brain has shut down and it has to catch up with what I'm seeing. I imagine it must be a ghastly sight when the blood has left my cheeks already. I have to clutch at my chest, fearing that my beating heart would just burst. I have to take a step back before I can stumble forward. I feel faint, like I'm floating, and any step I take will send me falling. Though it doesn't need much to take me off my feet, not when my knees shake. Not when the body becomes too much of a burden to carry. A crib. A crib of all bloody things stands in the corner. Innocent and unassuming. I can almost hear their laughter, mocking me without pity. But none are as condemning as the sounds of my own thoughts ringing in my head. Look at what you've done. Look at what you destroyed. That's all you do, isn't it? Make a mess of and kill everything you touch. Is nothing precious? Is nothing sacred? Is nothing safe? You are your father's son. The possible implications of what I've done weighs heavily, looming over my head as she lay still in my arms. Any will I had, any strength I had mustered in order to hide what I have done seeps away. I, can hold, I can't hold on to her anymore. I have no right to. My very touch corrupts and stains everything with blood. And Hana, she was just too pure, too good. I wasn't worthy. I was too greedy, and I had to ruin her, too. With a reverence, an odd thing to feel for someone I just murdered, I carefully put her down on the ground. That's all I can manage. Can't even pick myself up. Fatigue takes over me, and I resign myself to sit with my back against the wall. I killed her. I never thought I would actually go through with it. I told myself many times in the past that I would kill her one day. After a fight, I would grit my teeth and tell myself I could get rid of her. But when the anger has faded away, I've always changed my mind. I needed her, wanted her alive. I've always managed to stay my hand, never to harm her, neither with a fist nor an open palm. Now she's dead because of me. I know what I'm capable of. I've done so many selfish, heinous things in the pursuit of happiness, but to kill someone I actually love? Wake up, Buttercup. This isn't real. This can't be happening. It's difficult for me to have sympathy here, but I do have a small amount. This is a nightmare. That's all it is. There's no denying it's not with the smell of blood. Her blood. Musty and nauseating, filling the air like a sickly sweet perfume. It's a bit troubling how used I am to it. Death is something that I'm all too familiar with. Death shaped me. It has given and it has taken and oh how it has taken. I never liked it when it takes from me. And all of this, this room, if it meant what I think it does, I... I killed them. I killed them. Their blood is not the first to taint my hands. I've killed men and women, whether it be by my own hands or by my orders. 
but never children. <laughs> That's the line. After all, why would I condone the killing of someone who hasn't done me wrong? Helpless and innocent little things. Their deaths do not serve me any purpose. I don't want to believe it. No, 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 no. Wake up. Open your eyes. Raise your sleepy head. This is not real. Wake up, little Lucille. What have I done? <laughs> I don't know how long I sat in there, faced with Hannah's corpse and that horrid room. For a brief moment, I thought it's a good idea to sit her up, as if that would change anything. But the notion alone is stupid, one among the many, and it leaves me with little energy. At the very least, I managed to heap myself out at one point, only able to drag myself to the foot of our bed. Looking at the window shows the light has given away to darkness, enveloping everything with the night sky. And any other night, it might have given me comfort, but now I want to rewind time and have my sunshine once more. I loved her. And that's why she had to go. To be honest, I really don't know how to feel. Just, just gonna ignore you, Takako. I really don't know how to feel. Face it, Lucille Mitchell Wright. You owe me everything. I was just blinded with the rage with how she humiliated me at the party. I worked so hard to be where I am, but in the fickle society of the rich and famous, my own wife turning on me like that is basically social suicide. I was so angry, ready to protect what I built for myself at all costs. I still feel the anger burning low, but for some reason it is directed at myself. With it, confusion rears. Questions come and go as I second-guess myself and my actions. It had to be done. She was getting in our way. Yes. Yes, it had to be done. She was... Was she getting in my way? No, 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 that's not it. I did it because... Because... I don't know. A rawness scrapes at me until I'm left feeling cold and hollow. It carves out my insides and has me wanting to scratch at my skin. It's crushing, suffocating, and it makes me want to claw at my own throat. Only felt this once before, when she died. One can only call it grief. Perhaps this is the worst feeling of all. She deserved it. It's all her fault. With her out of the picture, I, I can focus on me. Finally, me I can time. Do what I want without compromising. <laughs> it's, Besides, hi. It's all about Luke now, baby. I never wanted to be a father anyway. You need neither that whore of a woman nor Jesus. Her children. Jesus, Takako. I know you want me, but come on. I would never want to be a father. I can't imagine what kind of father I would be and wouldn't wish myself on any child. Not with who I had as an example. Damien Wright was not a very good father in the short time I had him as one. In fact, he hadn't been a father at all. He cared little for me. Didn't even know about my existence until he needed an heir. There are others out there, other children that I could call my brothers and sisters. I know of one brother from Brighton, older than I by many years, who was cast aside because he was ill. Another born within the same week as I was ignored because he had a preference for men. He chose me not because he loved me, but because I was the only son of acceptable standards among the many illegitimate children he'd conceived. I wasn't a son to take care of, but a successor to groom in order to keep the right name alive. I was a tool, an investment. Not family, not even a person. Not that I hardly knew my father as one either. But even without that, I wouldn't want to bring a child onto this earth. I know the world with all it has to offer. Cold, cruel, and harsh, in which no true kindness can survive in one piece. Humanity is more beastly than any animal that roamed the land. Humans can be the most horrible of monsters. Perhaps the real walking dead was us. I am one of them. So if I'm a monster, then why does this hurt me so much? This is fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Everything's good. We're all having a great time in the right mansion. That has to be the biggest lie I've ever said. And I've lied a lot. You feel pain now, my prince. Because of your kind and caring heart. Yeah. But that shall pass. 
Uh-huh. It's a laughable enough notion on its own. Of course, humor is subjective. Shrokin comes in with a grim look on his face. I would assume that he was expecting a blood 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 bath in here, judging by the slowness of his steps. There is a mess in here, just not that kind. I don't think he was expecting me to be in the state that I am. Sitting on the ground, haggard looking, with blood drying on my sleeve on the sleeve of my suit. Oh, well, I giggle like I've just heard the funniest joke in the world. Oh, dear. <laughs> Master's gone insane. What is so funny? We... We would have been so beautiful together. Hannah's last words sound like a terribly bad joke coming from me. There were toys in there, you know. And this... This bloody book of names. Do you know what this means? Did you? Did you know about this? And don't you dare lie to me. If you knew about this, and you let me kill my own child, I'll... I'll fucking murder yours. I stare him straight in the eye, just daring him to lie about this. If he knew, if he knew, he should have stopped me. If he knew that Hannah was pregnant and did not tell me, he does not show it. The silence is not telling, but my blood boils as I feel how he judges me. You're a monster, Luke Wright, he says without speaking. Don't look at me like that! I bet he knows and still kept quiet about it. This is why I mustn't trust anyone. Liars and thieves, the lot of them. Of course, that makes me quite the hypocrite, doesn't it? But it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Becoming one of them is going to be inevitable. Sooner or later, had I been innocent of these sins in the first place. I want to lash out, to scratch and bite and tear, become the monster I really am. I am the dragon that craves treasure and sets fire to the world. I'll kill him. I'll do it. I'll kill them all. I already killed Hannah, after all. Why should anybody else be safe? She asked me to keep it secret. Unsure if you would be happy to be a father. I did not think you would do such a thing. I let myself hope for the best. For once. You loved her, so... The question is... Would you have done things differently because of this knowledge? Would you listen to me? To anyone other than her, for that matter? If they forbade you from doing as you please? And that's the kicker, isn't it? Because I don't know the answer to that myself. I want to scream. But I just feel so tired that I can no longer protest when I'm picked up off the floor by the arm like some reprehensible waif. I say nothing as I'm ushered into bed and told to sleep. As the lights are turned off, the terrace doors are closed, and the curtains shut, only then do I manage to speak. What? Not going to tuck <clears throat> me in and tell me to have sweet dreams? Nothing. He doesn't speak, or even acknowledge that he heard me. No playful banter, that's how you can tell he's pissed. The man merely collects the dirty laundry and leaves without a second glance. There is nothing but silence, cold and lonely and depressing. How long has it been since I've slept alone? Far too long. Can't even imagine how I've managed to sleep without a warm body beside me before I had Hana. Still, the fatigue soon catches up and pulls me into sleep's embrace. It is not her sobs that I hear, but his, hers, theirs. I'll never know now, will I? I've killed them. By my own doing, I've ended all of it, even before anything has begun. Their blood drips from my hands, pooling at my feet, lapping at my ankles like the cold, suffocating embrace of my sins. They creep up my limbs, slow and unhurried, twisting and turning. Up and up it goes until nothing but a sharp, guttural cry escapes from my mouth. Then, all at once... I choke back a scream and wake up in a cold sweat. With my heart pounding in my ears, it takes a while to remember where I am. In the dark and cold of the room, one can't fault me for feeling ill at ease. Now, this is familiar, but the context is certainly different. It isn't as bright as the penthouse, and the renovations did little to change how old it feels. We've been here for less than a week, it'll take a bit more time to adjust. It's hard to feel cozy, though, when I'm bloody freezing. Nudging the lump of fabric next to me, I sigh. Uh, it's cold. Don't hug the sheets, Hana. She always did this, though it hardly bothers me. Growing up, I was lucky to have something to use as a mattress. 
I'm not the one who grew up accustomed to Egyptian cotton with a thread count of 800. Besides, the warmth that Hannah exuded on her own is usually enough to keep me sleeping through the night. The temperature tonight must be something else with how chilly it is right now. It takes a while. Then I remember. It can't be Hannah. So... Who is it? The horrible image of Hannah's cold corpse lying underneath the sheets comes to mind. Let it be anything but that. An intruder seeking warmth and shelter from the cold, dreary night. A maid sneaking in with mischief in mind. A hired hitman that has it out for my head. Even the last would be better than finding her there. I can fight off a man with a gun. I can't say the same about the sight of her dead eyes reminding me what I've done. The smart thing to do here is to get out, really. But a knacking, curiosity aside, I have to know what they're here for, and more importantly, what they've seen. What if they've seen what's in the other room? Why linger? They hope to blackmail me, and this is a sick way of sticking around until they can talk to me. If I leave now, they might as well. Just the act of trespassing alone should be cause enough for punishment. Whether that punishment leads to a swift execution remains to be seen. There's no sign that they've heard me, nor have they shown any sign of moving where they lie. With care, I go for a knife hitting under the side of my bed. It would be foolish of me to instigate anything while I'm unharmed. Unarmed, after all. To pull back the covers would be a more difficult affair, because reaching out to uncover who was underneath, I have to prepare for anything and assume the worst. If I so much as see the nozzle of a gun, there's going to be another murder tonight. I see the rise and fall of the sheets, though it could easily be mistaken as the fault of the breeze. I'd like to believe that this is breathing I'm hearing. Having an intruder in my bed, no matter how absurd, would be preferable to insanity. To know that my mind is rebelling against me, making me believe Hannah still lives, and that she would even go anywhere near the monster that i become. A great sense of foreboding comes over me, making me hesitate with my plan. I should just get out of here, not look back, and let security handle it. That's what they're there for. But I don't much like the idea of people swarming in here, especially not with a dead body in the other room. The fewer people that know about it, the better. That's always a good rule to follow with this sort of thing. I'm on my own, then. But what's the worst thing that could happen, right? I have no reason to be afraid. There's no boogeyman under the bed, no monster in my closet. If anything, these things should be afraid of me. Right? Grab a fistful of sheets and throw them aside. Uh-huh. Yep. Nothing. Nothing but a bunch of pillows stare back at me. Of course, there's nothing under the sheets. Anna is dead, and no other body has or will ever grace my own bedside. But what I felt, the breathing I had heard, it isn't mine. Most likely the imaginary constructs of the guilty mind, of course. What else could it have been? Must be in my imagination. I mean, look at me. I'm running on fumes, and it got me bloody paranoid. I need more sleep, and maybe I'll take the day off as well. That sounds delightful. Yes, quiet and rest should do my head wonders. I'll have some much-needed winks, and I can figure out what I'm going to do with it. For now, hush and off to the realm of sleep. Hush, and think of nothing but fields of daffodils. The pleasant dreams refuse to linger, however. I'm curious to see just sort of where we are in the tree. Oh, God. <laughs> Not very far. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, we didn't, nothing, nothing really updated there much. It's still interesting. Okay. With the morning comes another disturbance, both too loud and too sharp for my taste, and I have very fine taste. When the piercing rings of a doorbell reaches even the bedroom, I'm very much inclined to think the person who built this place lacks any sense of it. Perhaps the only thing good in this place is that ruckus has effectively changed away all the whispers and the needing guilt, if only temporarily. Still, it's a bloody annoying distraction. I can tell already that it's going to be a long day, and it hasn't even started. Before the racket even lasts another minute, I'm peeling myself off the bed and heading straight for the main door. There will be another murder today, if this doesn't let up. How quaint. It seems everything in this blasted universe is intent on getting on my nerves as of late. They are unworthy of your attention, my prince. 
Shut up, Takako. Don and Bennett! Only a Nancy would knock at such an ungodly hour! Jesus. No. In the first place, I shouldn't be the one doing this. So I hired a valet for fuck's There's sake. There's a damn butler when I need him. Cast them away. Drive them away. I'll be honest, if only for today. But the mansion this quiet at this hour of the morning, it's easy to believe those little ghost stories might be real. But the only horror here is what I've done last night. The blood still on my hands, regardless of how many times I've washed it off. Neither the deafening silence nor the biting chill spreading across every room in the place. There's no place for fear when guilt already burns that fuel. So I wait for another second. When no butler still answers my call, I simply yank the doors open myself, perhaps with more force than needed. And maybe it should be appropriately there, considering the person on the other side, the hour he dared appear on my doorstep. Even someone with half a brain knows not to disturb anyone this early. Brief confusion quickly gives way to anger, but with a bloody photographer can even get a word in, I'm hurling venom at him. It's less than he deserves, really. Hana would disapprove, scold me for cheating the photographer with such disrespect. She seemed fond of him after all, despite meeting him only once or twice. He's merely doing his job, she'd say. But she's no longer here, is she? You? How the hell did you get in here? What in seven hells do you want? It's bloody six in the morning! Listen, sir, I know this is not a good time. Oh, it's not a good time. Did you even check the clock before coming here? I bet you didn't. My home, my rules now. As simple as that. Unlike you, the ones living in this house need to sleep. Oddly, the words taste foreign and bitter in my tongue. A remorse slowly taking home, creeping up and twinning inside, reminding me of my transgressions when it hasn't done so before. Funny how the years have changed me. So I let anger guide them instead, if only because it's easier to cast it away when you have someone else to project it onto. It just so happens it's a person I will never take a liking to, no matter what the memory of her says in my mind. A plus, I suppose. A blessing. At least I won't feel any remorse if my ire does pierce. Only you matters. No one else. Come back when people are actually awake, or I'll call security on you. He continues shouting even as I slam the door in his face. Some nonsense about the news lately, though I don't understand most of it. However, with the closed doors muffling the better part of it, and with no ears to listen, his tirade doesn't last too long. Eventually, he leaves, and silence once again fills the room as it should. In hindsight, maybe I should also call for psychiatric services? He certainly sounds mental, just screaming like that. A suspicious man like him, left roaming the immediate grounds? Nothing good can come of it. But if his presence will indeed bring a problem, a sign of bad things to come, I'll probably know soon enough. Worst comes to worst, Rogan will take care of it, if need be. It's what I'm paying him for. In the meantime, the bigger problem at hand... The hush is quickly replaced by the nightmarish reality of what I've done and what I must do. Though the guilt weighs heavily upon me, I have to need to push it aside and proceed as necessary. Emotions play no part in this. Regret will not keep me out of jail if I don't hide my crime one way or another. Oh, it should be easy. Just hide the body, no? Drain the body, crush the teeth, burn off the fingerprints, and mar her face past the point of recognition before chopping the body up. There'll be plenty of options after that, incineration, feeding it to animals, dumping it in the ocean. Oh, she would like that last one, wouldn't she? Of course, there's always the option to let you decompose and become fertilizer for my daffodils. That really isn't the big this issue, though. This whole murder business just ruins a good Sunday morning, <laughs> Yeah, now, not? nothing ruins my good Sunday morning like having to deal with the murder of Saturday night, you know? Hannah, my dear Hannah, till death do us part. Yet, even in death, I cannot let you go. My hands still shake at the very idea that I have your blood on them. My insides feel both numb and afire because of the sin I've committed. My lips quiver as I fight off the urge to cry prayers and apologies in the hopes that they would be enough to bring you back. But I know that this is no fairy tale. I have to laugh. To think I was just talking about happily ever after is with Pink a few days past, wasn't I? If she were in my place, I'd be rubbing it in her face about how right I was. I'm not jaded, just realistic and a murderer. And here I am now, hoping so much that I can still be afforded one. 
But I'm not gonna wake up the slumbering princess with a kiss, true love or otherwise. No sentiment or good intention will change the cruel reality of life. Even if miracles do exist, I do not think they would happen for a man such as myself. The past cannot be changed. Must deal with the consequences to come, regardless of what the other person who has just walked in says. And he always has to have an opinion. I think murder would ruin a sane person's mood, no matter the day or time. Agreed, Shrokin. Continue mouthing off and there'll be a second one, Shrokin. I've killed for less in the past. I've been soft. Complacent. Those things need to change. She made me soft. Over the years, I've been told marriage has made me a kept man. Of course, people stopped saying that after I shot a fool who thought disrespecting my wife would get him anywhere. Now that she's gone, though, well, who knows? I mean no disrespect. Excuse the murmurings of the insane, yes? But I have every confidence and every dread that you will go through with it. However, about the madame, how shall we proceed? I'm sure it has come to you that this will need more attention than the others who have gone <laughs> under our care. Uh-huh. The chance of her remains being found is slim if we do things properly, as we have done in the past. But the chance of her disappearance going unnoticed, not bloody likely. She is, was, Hannah. Whether she was Hannah Evans or Hannah Wright, she's practically Luxborn royalty. Her disappearance will cause quite the stir. And who will be suspect number one? Me, of course, after the public blow-up she had at the party. This won't be as easy as, say, killing an ordinary accountant who's looked into the numbers a bit too thoroughly, or an attorney who hopes to get in my way. For now, I need time to plan to, at the very least, hide the body and cover up her disappearance. That's why I had the rest of the staff sent away, except for Shrogan. I suppose we can't just sweep this under the rug, can we? What about a magic trick, then? Can we pull off a sleight of hand? Now you see her, now you don't. What in God's name are you talking about? Misdirection. <laughs> Clever. You could blame the butler. I would not mind retirement. <laughs> A nice try, but I'm not letting you go. I still own you until I see fit. There's no need for you to take the fall. Not when there are plenty of others I can pinpoint as the culprit. Why even make it murder? I don't think turning it into a kidnapping story will work. But Hana was sociable enough, she had plenty of suitors. She could have been a bit too friendly with one of them. That would be the pot calling the kettle black. But she might have, if she was falling out of love with me. She might have wanted to leave me for another. Someone else who caught her eye, her interest. Just our, just our very visitor this morning, in fact. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Very funny. So, Grand Director. Do you want to tell me what Blue Foncie is all about? I was talking with Zachary, the photographer for Luxury Living. He was a perfect gentleman, Luke. I can't say the same for you as of recent. Look, Luke, nothing will happen. You have to relax. It was just a friendly chat. I can't believe that you're going to pin the blame for this on poor Zachary. Is that why he's here? Unlikely. But her, is that why she pulled that fucking stunt in public? Did she really not love me anymore? Is it because of the photographer, or is it someone else? How many others could be at fault for her change of heart? Are the phantom thieves involved in this case? This is all her fault. She already had you and she let herself stray. What if we said that she eloped, ran away with another man? I'd sooner believe she was killed by the Anselm Butcher than think she fled with another man. But it could work. The masses will eat up such gossip. We can fake evidence, signs that will point to her traveling with a companion. Though, if I may be a bit honest, I loathe to speak ill of her or create rumor. What if it isn't a rumor? What if there was someone? Why else would she act out like that? The falling out would be the best excuse to leave me. Or coming out as the victim. <laughs> Whatever the case, it'll put me under less scrutiny. The police will investigate if it's a murder or a kidnapping or a sudden disappearance. But they won't really bother with marital and relationship issues, will they? They are not minors. And I suppose the police will not bother unless you file a case. They have more problems than a love affair. It would be best to consult someone who knows the law a bit more intimately. Your lawyer, yes? Yes, but he's away on a holiday, enjoying the beaches on some back-end <laughs> country or some such. Somewhat called... Philippians or something? Philippians, yes. He told me he'll be back on the 2nd of November. Wouldn't that be a bit too late? 
If we have to wait that long, we can consult someone else. The chef inspector might be willing. Yes, I suppose I can ask Lee. He's an idiot, but he's an idiot who studied the law. If I ask questions, he'll pry, and I'd like him to not give away too much. The trick to keeping a secret is to have as few people as possible know about it. Take a few people down and put them in their graves if I have to. At least the lawyers paid to believe I'm innocent won't be nosy about the whole thing. And really, it's just because... I don't trust him with this. He's probably busy with that wife of his. If she's still even in the city. Who can I even trust, really? You can trust your most faithful servant. For I am the only one who truly loves you, my Well, friends. Shroken, now that's a weird thing to say to me. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's entirely not mutual, but, like, this is not the time after I just murdered my wife. A person's loyalty stops where greed starts. They all bow down to curry favor, faking smiles and attending my every whim, expecting approval and gifts in exchange. That is all well and good for me. Let it not be said that I am not a generous prince. But it is those who I reign over through fear that I must watch out for. People like Harvey Lee fell under both of those. He catered to me shamelessly so that I can aid him with his wishes in turn. And when he found out that he was in too deep, I had to leash him, lest he get in my way. Sure, I say jump and he'll ask how high, but he's a spineless little shit. The moment he thinks he sees the opportunity to turn the tables on me, he'll take it. Bribery and blackmail can only go so far. One needs to make the other person bend, but take care not to have them broken. If they believe they have nothing to lose, that's when they retaliate. At the very least, he'll try to use the knowledge to try and gain leverage to be on equal grounds with me. If he does that, I'll be forced to kill him. I don't like letting go of my toys because they decide to be stupid. Handling idiots can be so tiring, no matter how many of them die off, now the three can be bound within a stone's toss. It's best to make use of them, one way or another, until it's decided that they need to be deleted from the gene pool. It won't do to use a story until we're certain it's believable. After all, it's the first time I've become a widower. Until then, keep the others away from her body. Standing up to leave, I grow still at the sound of shattering glass. A dampness leaks into my shoes as red stains the hem of my pants and my socks. I forgot I was having wine. <laughs> Go clean that up and leave me be. I've already had the other staff take the day off. I don't want to see hide a hair of you unless I call. Alright, folks. Well, we'll have to continue to see this broken man get even more broken <laughs> next time. Until then, this has been Downstage Gaming. I have been your host, Josh, and I will catch you all next time.